everyone, it's Anthony Christo. I'm here today to talk to you about the other school of magic, the Luminary Dream Magic. Now, as you know, Captivaries, they have the Dream Ether pouring out of their fingertips and they capture the enemies on a page or capture pro objects on the page. Whereas with the Luminary, they do the opposite. They draw and bring things to life. So there's like ink markings coming out or ink Dream Magic, Dream Ether we call it. The Dream Ether pours out of their fingertips and they can basically draw and bring things to life. So luminaries are able to use the dream magic that flows through their veins to craft and bring wondrous creations to life. The magic flows out from their fingertips, allowing them to draw on many different surfaces, bringing creatures or objects to life. Some luminaries only use their fingers, while others are proficient with brushes or quills, similar to the captivary. As luminaries grow in power, their creations become more ambitious. Some great luminaries have even created whole cities or buildings with their artistic abilities. So books and scrolls are the perfect uh, preferred surface or perfect surface for them that they choose to draw on and bring creations to life. Um, however, luminaries can draw their creations not only in their book and store it, but they can touch it with one last brush stroke to bring it to life as well. Um, the dream marking the creation will not spring to life unless they do that. So great luminaries are able to create paintings that are portals by drawing a location from life. This painting can be hung on a wall and dream mages can portal to that location through the painting once a day as well. So that's a high level spell that we're gonna develop as well. Um, not only that, luminaries um, have been known as well to draw on trees and bring things to life or rocks and bring things to life. So some of them that are more bent on the druid circle, they may be luminaries that draw on, on that sort of thing or they construct and they, they build, bring things to life and then um, use items to bring things to life. So we have one spell here I'm gonna talk about to give you an example. That's the Illuminate Plant Creature spell. It's a level five transmutation spell. Casting time is actually eight hours though. It takes a while, you know, this may be something that a druid prepares. Um, it's a touch spell. You draw and create a creature in your sketchbook and bring it to life. That's the target. Um, it, basically the components are V, S and M and, uh, uh, and an A gate worth at least 1000 GP. It's a five level spell which the spell then consumes. So it is an expensive spell. It is instantaneous. It is used by the Bard, Druid, or Warlock as well. So this is a level five um, subclass of, uh, say, Luminary for the Druid, the Bard, and the Warlock. After spending the casting time tracing magical pathways on a book with a precious gemstone in the shape of a humanoid plant, you touch the page and bring the creation to life. The, drawing, the drawn creature gains an intelligence of 10, the target also gains the ability to speak one language you know. If a target looks like a plant, it gains the ability to move its limbs, roots, vines, creepers, and so forth. And it gains senses similar to humans as well. Uh, your, GM, your DM or GM chooses statistics appropriate for the cre created plant, such as the statistics for the created shrub or the created tree. The awakened plant is charmed by, by you for 30 uh, days or until you, you or your companions do anything harmful to it. So when the charmed condition ends, the awakened creature chooses whether to remain friendly to you based on how you treated it while it was charmed. So you can also roll another, I suppose, persuasion check to see if it will join you. But if you've treated that plant well, that it's joined you in combat and you've healed it, you've kept it alive, you've watered your plant, so to speak, it will stay with your party. But if you've not treated it well, it will go off. And the difference with our spells is Let's say in normal D&D you have a, a construct or a spell, it, 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 it vanishes, it disappears, it no longer actually happen, uh, happens to exist in the world. In our world, no, dream magic is continuous. Most creatures that you summon or capture either stay in the book forever or they're brought back to life and they're, they're, they have free will. They go on and they do their own thing. That's the difference. Imagine a whole universe space like that where you as a luminary are creating things and they're just constantly growing and existing and they have a life of their own. So you create this plant creature, it goes off, does, it doesn't like you, and then it comes back with a family and it's like, hey, look, actually I'll join you in battle. So there's all these cool narrative elements that you can add to the actual um, campaign that you're running with our book. So hopefully that makes sense. I will be covering this more, more about Luminary Captivary. I may have a whole video just on dream magic in general, because a lot of people go, what is this dream magic thing? So it is dream magic, uh, it should actually be coined dream art magic. So dream dream artist artistry is basically has three schools: the captivaries, the luminaries, and the chosen. So and I'll also be going and doing videos on every subclass that, that we've created. There's basically thirteen plus subclasses. 
So yeah, hopefully see you in the next video. But hope that was informative. And this gives you an idea of creating your own spell as well. If you want to create like a level five spell similar to this, I'm happy for people to use this spell as they please. This is a freebie, but it, we'll have more awesome spells like this, um, Illuminary, Captivary spells. And our, oh yeah, and the third thing I want to talk about is uh, the blessings. We have blessings and curses. And those are more applicable to cho the chosen class. So where the blessing and close, uh, the blessings and the curses are fused to the weapons that the chosen use. So I hope that makes sense. There's three schools of magic. They use dream magic. It's kind of like an art in itself, dream art magic. But there's also other dream spells that we are gonna we've got already in the works that all are based on dream and falling asleep and entering dream planes and all that sort of thing, or teleportation into other parts of the world. So I hope you like that. I hope that was informative, and see you on the next episode. See you, bye.